course, you have had so many moments across your lengthy career to create memories on the international stage. When looking back, what moment stands out to you most? My most favorite moment was in season four. Uh, TSM was possibly at their worst, not expected to win at all. We made a miracle run, and uh, my favorite moment was everything about it. We got a new coach we had lust for. It. LMQ came to America as a full Chinese team, and we beat them. <laughs> like a lot of people in this audience also have that memory. I, yeah, I, uh, that run was my most favorite because it wasn't just the win for ourselves, but it was also for NA. Which is why we are so happy to have you on the stage with us today. We do have two more legends joining us as well. Next up, the legendary C9 shot caller, who ain't afraid to go pro to pro, it's high. <laughs> Hi, you are still heavily involved as the LCS as our pro correspondent. What about you when looking back as a competitor, what stands out in your mind? I think I have two memories that stand out really well to me. Number one is when we first qualified into the LCS. I put a lot of effort to get into there, and it made it so that me dropping out of college was a good thing. I don't recommend it to everyone out there. Don't drop out of college to play league, but that was one of my best memories. And then the second one was, I believe we beat Najin Shield at Worlds, and that's where that, like, that famous picture of me hugging Medios is. Uh, that was a really good time for me as well. I'm sure that picture is printed on someone's wall somewhere. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And finally, the most decorated jungler in NA history. It's X Mithy. X Mithy, you have brought so many teams across the finish line. What comes to mind the moment above them all? Um, I think the most memorable international tournament I had was probably my first MSI run with CLG. Um, a game, a game against RNG. Um, we were pretty behind and we still came back from it. And yeah, even though we went 0-3 against SKT at the finals, I think it was still a pretty fun series. We are all about stirring up the nostalgia on the stage here today. I'm looking forward to the work you perform here in this draw. Soon enough, we'll be getting to the action specifically. But here is a look at all of the teams that are going to be in the play-in portion of this draw. So from these pools that you see, we will draw two teams into each of the groups. Now it's important to note, in the case that teams are drawn from a group that already contains a representative from the region, or in the event that the draw could cause future invalid draws, they will instead be added to the next group in which they are eligible for. Additionally, the competitive operations team has an update to share regarding this rule. In the scenario where both LEC third and fourth seeded teams advance to the group stage, the fourth seeded team will not be subject to this rule. They will be allowed to be drawn into a group with another EU team. In the scenario where either of the LEC teams is eliminated from the competition during the play-in stage, the rule will remain in place. All clear, all is said and done. I know it's been a while since you have been on this stage, put your hands to work mechanically, but I'm gonna ask you to put them hands to work in a very different fashion here today. First up, we have pool number one. Dyrus, go ahead and draw our first team. <laughs> the greatest challenge we have seen to date. And who do we have? Oh. Fnatic from the LEC. Fnatic battled their place into group one here today through a lower bracket gauntlet, mirroring their 2021 journey to Worlds and continuing their storied legacy in Europe. With a star-studded lineup, including names like LEC champion Humanoid and dominant bot lane duo Hillisung and Upset, Fnatic are ready to take on the world once more.
We've gotten ourselves started here in Group A today with the LEC. Dyrus, are you ready for our second draw? Oh, again? Okay. We're top loading it with you. <laughs> oh. DRX reigning from the LCK coming into Group B today. Now DRX made their first world's appearance in two years and did so in dramatic fashion, winning consecutive five game wars in the Korean Championship. Now DRX is led by Captain Def, who brings his world's Def swag to the international tournament for the seventh time. And this team is more than ready to take on any opponent they find in Group B. Oh my God. That was pretty. I'm strong enough. Asking you to exhibit that strength once more. It's a true workout today. Why is it so hard? <laughs> I thought it was, it was the most. Oh my God. Beyond gaming coming in for the PCS in Group A. Now, Beyond Gaming completed an undeniable miracle run to clinch their spot here in Group. Finishing sixth place in both spring and summer, they managed to stay alive in the standings and won a five-game series against domestic titans PSG Talon in the lower brackets. Finals of the PCS were quite a wonder to watch. Now, Wacko and Beyond Gaming are hungry to prove themselves again at Worlds, especially to their opponents here in Group A. I know there's not much mystery around our last name, but still, the formality. <laughs> RNG from the LPL slotting into Group B. And you know, you can never count out Royal Never Give Up. Despite struggles in summer, RNG punched their tickets to Worlds with the help of top laner Breathe, who slotted in after their 2022 MSI win and worked wonders to refresh this roster. With three MSI titles to their name, RNG have known glory before and they'll hunt for it again, looking to add more global gold in their trophy case, starting in Group B. Our groups are starting to take some shape. You get to rest those hands now. Hi, it's time to put you to work. Go ahead and draw from pool number two. favorite in Detonation Focus Me here going into Group A. Now Detonation Focus Me, they explode into Group A as the back-to-back-to-back-to-back -to -back -to -back -to -back LJL champs. And undisputed gods of their region. With a nine-year tenure on this team, ADC Yudapon continues to be the cornerstone of this roster. And with longtime fixtures Evi and Steel, they create a solid foundation for former LCK players Harp and Yaharong and the next era of record-breaking performances for DFM at Worlds. All right, hi. Up for the next one. Buffalo coming into Group B. Now in 2022, the world eagerly anticipated the return of the VCS, and the Saigon Buffalo more than delivered. After almost taking down two-time reigning MSI champs RNG, SGB returned back to their region to battle for their spot in this group. Now a surprising picks from Froggy and a coach that bets everything on his players time and time again. This roster is ready to take on the world once more. We are half 
halfway through the group. The fans are definitely looking out for one team in particular. Let's see who you draw. from the LEC moving to Group B. Despite a slow start in spring, Mad Lions roared back to life in summer with the addition of mid laner Niski to claim their spot in this Group B in their third consecutive Worlds appearance. Beastly performances took them to knockout stage during Worlds last year, and the Lions are looking to go even further in 2022. And as a reminder, this team is going into Group B because Fnatic is already slotted into Group A. None other than Evil Geniuses of the LCS joining Group A. Now this team led by support mastermind Vulcan and world champion Impact, Evil Geniuses ooze talent. Mid lane protege Jojo Pion is unafraid to face every region so-called GOAT. And with the first ever double major region regular season MVP inspired by his side, Evil Geniuses are a devilish addition to Group A. Good work, Hi. Appreciate your hands. Time for pool number three. X Smithy, you up for the task? First from pool three, it's Loud going into group A. Now in only their second year in League of Legends, CB LOL top seed Loud have fought their way to the international stage for the first time. Led by CB LOL veterans Robo and Tinones and their rookie of the year, AD Carry Brantz, Loud is hoping to make some noise in NA for Worlds. They face stiff competition in this group, but they know they've got the support of all Brazilian fans. Bazoel for Loud. We're getting close to the end here for our play-ins. Let's find out who our second team is. The Istanbul Wildcats are slotted into Group B. Now, four straight seasons of the same starting five has brought the Istanbul Wildcats to their second consecutive global event and their first ever appearance on the world stage. Now, keep an eye out for team leader Holy Phoenix and his aggressive play style as he looks to claw the cats out of groups. This team definitely has a lot of crowd behind them. Looking to make a statement in the play-in stage. We still have two more teams. Xmithy, let's find out who the next is. We have Chiefs Esports Club going into Group A. Now you want dominance? Look no further than Chiefs Esports Club. The LCO champs only lost one game all split. I mean, one game! And that was in the Summer Finals. I mean, mid laner Tally makes his third Worlds appearance in a row, having previously represented Legacy Esports and Peace, and now it looks to fly even higher with Chiefs in this group. Now Razor Koalas and Kiwis for Chiefs Esports Club. One more to draw before we let you stop down. Oh. We have Isurus going into Group B from LLA. 
Now, Easterdos made their way to Worlds with a regional record, becoming the first LLA team to win three league titles. Now, mid laner Seiya may be the most beloved player in the LLA and is leading his team on their first foray into international play. Just thumbs up all around, baby, for the LLA champs, Isurus. Welcome to play-ins. As you can see on your screen, all of the play-ins have been decided. The groups are settled. We are going to take a moment to reset and ready ourselves for the group draw. Well, there you have it. All 12 of our teams drawn into the playing stage for 2022 Worlds. Uh, initial reactions, my friends. Uh, good job, NA drawers, putting <laughs> NA in Group A. Thank you, Definitely High. not scripted. High and Dyrus built a group of death in Group B, and True. they made sure not to put us in it. Yeah, let's walk through why it, you know uh, NA fans would be happy uh, with this, given the way that the group stage or the playing stage actually plays out. Yeah, so obviously Group B has the two four seeds from LCK and LPL. RNG, who are the current reigning MSI title holders, um, they did obviously kind of take a little bit of a backseat towards some other teams in the LPL this past split. Um, however, they were the final team to come through the bracket. I thought it was kind of cool to see like, you know, the MSI team coming back mm -hmm. to the world stage. So they have a really formidable squad. I do want to call out their top laner, Breathe, because people might remember Bin from MSI. Um, I think Breathe is really talented. He's been waiting to go to Worlds for a really long time, came up through OMG, uh, was then on WE, BLG, and then now RNG. So um, they're, they're a really formidable team. So don't let the, yeah, like that, that's why this group is like so ridiculously stacked it seems it's just because we're expecting drx and rng to perform well saigon struggled more in summer but they also attended msi you yeah. also 